Here we're going to look at a nice functional equation problem from the 1995 International Math Olympiad shortlist. So our goal is to prove that there is a unique function from n to n, so that's the natural numbers to themselves, and by natural numbers I mean positive integers, so I am not including zero, such that for all m, n, 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 we have f of m plus f of n equals n plus f of m plus 95. Then after we prove that there is a unique function that satisfies this, well, along the way, we'll find out what that function is. And next, what we want to do is evaluate the following finite sum. So we've got the sum as k goes from 1 to 19 of f evaluated at k. Okay, so I've got some hints uh, provided for you guys to try if you want to try this before we look at the solution. My first hint is that nearly all functional equation problems are solved by the same function. So I won't say what that function is, but if you look back at some of the videos that I've done on functional equations, you'll notice that the same function shows up again and again and again. And my second hint is to get rid of this 95. So in other words, maybe we can redefine another function so that we have a functional equation, but just without the 95. Okay, so maybe give this problem a go with the hints. We'll come back with a solution. Okay, so hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look at a solution. And like I said for my second hint, we're going to try to get rid of this 95. And we'll do that by making the following observation. So if we have m bigger than or equal to 96, well, that means that m minus 95 is a natural number. So that means we're allowed to plug it into the function. So let's maybe go ahead and do that and see what we get. So we'll have f of m minus 95 plus f of n. So this is just taking this functional equation and replacing m with m minus 95. So that's going to be equal to n plus f of m. Great. Really, it's m plus 95 minus 95, but the substitution has all of that stuff cancel. Okay. So next, what we want to do is rearrange what's going on inside of this function on the left-hand side and then include a minus 95 uh, from both terms on the left and right-hand side. So let's see what that gives us. So we'll have f of m plus, and I'm going to write this in another color, f of n minus 95. And then I'll subtract 95 equals n plus f of m minus 95. So notice what I did is I just rearranged what's happening inside of this function on the left-hand side, and then I subtracted 95, 95 from the left and the right-hand side. Now next what I want to do is think about these similarly colored terms as being grouped. And notice I've got a functional equation for the function f of n minus 95. And that gives us some motivation for how to define a new function. So let's define g by g of m equals f of m minus 95. But now we can take this functional equation for f and write it in terms of g. So notice now we have g of m plus g of n equals n plus g of m. So that's our new functional equation for g, and it doesn't have anything to do with 95. So notice this mi minus 95 was absorbed into f when we redefined it as g. The same thing for this one over here. And then this one right here is absorbed within this f that has all of this other stuff. Okay, so let's maybe bring this to the top and we'll start with our new functional equation. So on the previous board, we defined an accessory function which we called g and it satisfied the rule that g evaluated at m was equal to f evaluated at m minus 95. That makes g a function from the natural numbers to the set which I'm calling the natural numbers minus 95. So, and that satisfied a somewhat simpler functional equation, equation g of m plus g of n equals n plus g of m. Now we're going to play some games with that functional equation to get an even nicer functional equation that g satisfies. 
And so the way to do that is to use three unknowns plugged into here, but two of them must be bigger than or equal to 96 or strictly bigger than 95 for this to work. So let's go ahead and see how to do this. So we wanna take A and C, bigger than or equal to 96, and we'll point out why we need to do that as we move forward. And then we'll take B to be any natural number. So that's like free to be anything. And now let's look at G of A plus B plus C, like that. Okay, so notice that that looks like the right-hand side of our functional equation. So since it looks like the right-hand side of our functional equation, we can rewrite it in terms of this left-hand side of our functional equation. So that looks like g of a plus b plus g of c. But now notice that the inside of that, so this a plus b plus g of c, looks like the right-hand side of our functional equation again, just composed inside of the function g. And so in particular, if we take this bit right here, that looks exactly like the right-hand side of our functional equation, so we can apply our functional equation to these peach parentheses. So that'll give us the following. So we'll have g of a, and then those peach parentheses become g of g of b plus c, like that. So maybe I'll go ahead and put our peach parentheses around those so we know exactly where that came from. But next, we can apply our functional equation from the outside instead of from the inside. So in other words, from this step to this step, we did the peach parentheses, so we were working inside of this most exterior application of our function g, but now we want to apply our functional equation to the outside. So let's see what that gives us. That's gonna give us a g of b plus c, so here, g of b plus c is playing the role of n, and then plus g of a, and that's playing the role of m here. So now let's look at the extreme left and right hand side of that equation, and notice that that gives us g of a plus b equals g of a plus g of b. In other words, there are some sort of linear property to our function g. But notice we have a restriction at the moment. We have the restriction that A is bigger than or equal to 96, but B can be any natural number. But we can get rid of that restriction if we're careful, and we can do it the following setup. So let's maybe go ahead and suppose that we have any two natural numbers. Maybe I'll call them R and S. So let's say R and S are any two natural numbers. And let's look at the following calculation, which will prove some sort of equation like this, but for all natural numbers instead of this requirement that the first one is bigger than or equal to 96. So we have g of r plus s plus g of 96. Okay, well, 96 is most definitely bigger than or equal to 96, so we can apply this rule right here, where b is 96 and a is r plus s. That'll give us that this is g of r plus s plus 96, like that. But now s plus 96, well, that's bigger than or equal to 96, so we'll play this game again, but now a is r and b is s plus 96. And that gives us g of r plus g of s plus 96. But again, 96 is bigger than or equal to 96, so we can use this rule again, where A is S, or I should say A is 96 and B is S. So that gives us G of R plus G of S plus G of 96. Okay, great. But now if we look at this extreme left and right hand side of the equation, we can see that we can easily cancel this g of 96 term, meaning we can remove this requirement for a to be bigger than or equal to 96, and really we just need a to be any natural number. So we have our function g satisfies this like additive property. Okay, so let's maybe bring that to the top and we'll move on. So just to reiterate where we are, we let g, this new accessory function, be defined by g of m equals f of m minus 95. 
And then through some work, we were able to reduce this functional equation to a very simple one. So we have g of m plus n equals g of m plus g of n. So in other words, there's this nice additive property. And if you're like trained in the ways of these functional equations, you probably know that there is only one class of functions that satisfies this kind of additive rule, and that is linear functions. So maybe I'll write that as an observation, and we will prove this observation. So our observation is that g of n equals a times n for a some natural number. And I want to point out here that a is, in fact, just g evaluated at 1. So we're going to prove this by induction. And the proof is pretty straightforward. So we need to look at our base case. And notice we have g of 1 equals, well, that equals a times 1 with a equals g of 1. So really, there's nothing to be done with that. This is really going to satisfy this type of equation for any function. OK, now let's make our induction hypothesis. And that is for some k bigger than or equal to 1, we have g of k equals a times k. Now we want to look at the k plus first case. So maybe we'll write it like this. Consider g of k plus 1. And notice we can write that as g of k plus g of 1 by the functional equation that we proved already. But now that's equal to a times k plus a times 1 by our induction hypothesis and our base case. But that's equal to a times k plus 1. So that finishes the proof of this little observation that g of n equals a times n. In other words, it's a linear function. OK, let's get rid of the proof and then see what that says for our original function. So we just got done proving that our accessory function g was actually a linear function. So it was of the form g of n equals a times n, where a is equal to g of 1. And that's, of course, some natural number. So now what we want to do is apply this rule that relates g and f to get an equation for f. But that's pretty straightforward. Here we have f evaluated at n is going to be a times n plus 95. So that's just by adding 95 to both sides of that orange boxed equation. Now what we'll do is plug this function into our original functional equation. And so that should give us a good idea of what are the possible values of a. So plugging that in here, so let's see what we get. I'll copy the functional equation down. So we have f of m plus f of n equals n plus f of m plus 95, like that. OK, nice. So let's see what we get. So this outermost application of f will give us a times m plus f of n plus 95, like that. And then applying f on the right-hand side will leave us with n plus a times m plus 95. So I'll just write it like that. So next, what we need to do is apply f to this n that's in here. So that'll leave us with a times m plus. So I'm going to replace f of n with a times n plus 95, like this. Now I'll just bring this part down. So we have this is equal to n plus a times m plus 95. Great. So now let's see what kind of stuff cancels. So notice here we have a times m. That's going to cancel with this a times m. So let's maybe make that happen. That cancels with that. And then next we have a times 95. That's going to cancel this a times 95 like that. And that just leaves us with a squared times n equals n. But this has to hold for all natural numbers n, including n equals 1. So that means a squared equals 1. But if a squared is 1, that tells us a is 1 or negative 1. But since we want our function g of n to land on the natural numbers minus 95, that means we have to have a equals 1. 
Notice if a was equal to negative one, then applying g to one would give us negative 100, but that is not in the codomain over here. So in other words, we've got a equals one. Okay, so now let's maybe go ahead and replace a with one here and we'll finish it off. So we just finished our argument that our function f satisfying this functional equation must be of the form f of n equals n plus 95. That gives us a nice route to calculate this sum. So let's do that. We have the sum as k goes from one to 19 of f of k. So that's gonna be equal to the sum as k goes from one to 19 of k plus 95. So now let's split that into parts. So notice that's gonna be the sum from k equals one to 19 of k. So let's write that down. The sum k equals one to 19 of k plus the sum from k equals one to 19 of 95, but that just gives us 19 times 95. Then using a standard fact about triangular numbers, so let's recall that the sum of the first n natural numbers is equal to n times n plus one over two, that allows us to take this and write it as 19 times 19 plus one, which is 20 over two plus 19 times 95. But now it's just fairly simple arithmetic and you'll see that we get the satisfying answer in the end of 1995, which is the year of this problem. And that's a good place to stop.